<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We we have we have an agenda that was you know I don't know how many people got it but it says start at six ten. So we will start at six ten. And uh, I'm so glad that you're able to be here. And I know we have some new faces here tonight, which is great. Um, I'm here, Richard Reed. I'm the pastor of the church here, but also um, the director of the Friends of Irish Research and the David Allen Lampert Library. And uh, we just cannot wait <clears throat> to get back fully open for researchers. Um, I just got scheduled to do a lecture out at the Ashland Public Library so uh, in March. Uh, and so looking forward to that, it'll be a hybrid because um, they draw people from all over the world. And uh, they have one of the bigger Zoom accounts. They have a thousand, so it could be a busy night, especially during the Q&A part, which is always an interesting session. Um, but we're you know, continually building here. We're outreach to the community. Um, we provide services that are not provided anywhere else on the South Shore with the capacities that we have. And when I get it all cleaned up a little bit, maybe in a month or so, uh, we'll be able to do another tour of the library. We've just picked up uh, some bookcases that we're gonna find a home for. I have the books for it. Now, if you're bored and you want to come and volunteer time to catalog, I have over 100 boxes of books that need to be cataloged. And, uh, now, if it has an ISBN code on it, those are the easy ones because I've got the barcode scanner, so it just, ee, 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 you can do 25 books in a minute. And, uh, but we also have a lot of really old <clears throat> relics. Um, I'm picking up another donation Saturday of four bins of, box, of books, and, but also a Civil War collection. So we've been able to invest this year through some donors to uh, add probably about three thousand dollars worth of specially special old books some from as old as 1675 so we have a lot of you know relics around here not just me um, <coughs> and we're so glad that we're able to you know uh, have our facility open um, we are a mask optional facility and um, to clear the record we are a vaccine card optional uh, facility as well you know nobody carded you at the door today <clears throat> so we want to make sure that people understand that we are a church we we operate under a little bit of different rules than everybody else and uh, we're glad that we can do this because Otherwise, we'd all be huddled up in our homes on Zoom tonight. Mm -hmm. And who other than me is Zoomed out? <laughs> Just about everybody. So <clears throat> we've got uh, a lot of things uh, coming up, and including one big event that I know Ann will talk about in a few moments. And uh, so... Uh, I'm going to ask Ann to come and uh, start filling us in on some of these things that are coming up. And, of course, so we want to uh, welcome, especially welcome all those that are here for the first time. Uh, I, I know this gentleman's here from the Adult Ed. Yes. And I run Adult Ed. I've taught it for years. Um, and we have our own training center here that we use for computers besides using it for genealogy. So um, it's... It's a noble, it's a noble job to teach. And I've taught everything from grade four all the way through high school and into community colleges, colleges and trade schools. So it's still my, it's still my favorite thing to do. When you see a student and you see the light bulb come on, there's no, no greater reward than that. So, uh, Ann, yeah, okay. all right. I'm going to swing my chair a little bit All out of right. the way. Sure. Okay. So um, we're going to have a guest speaker, but I'm, I'm going to highlight that we have a whole lot going on here. 
again, we will be repeating this. First of all, we're going to start at the bottom here. February 10th, 6 p.m. will be the next meeting of cultural affairs and tourism. And we're always inviting people constantly. And if you haven't written it down, don't worry. I will be doing the email blast sooner, etc. And how would I say it? Um, what do you call that? Um, you know, more, ma uh, consolidating it and making it a little bit smoother and more organized. So, um, this is being taped by Broughton Community Access. Um, uh, Tom's over there, which is great because not only does Tom do a great job, he has a lot of patience. Okay, what people don't always realize is that you can do a public service announcement sure, after at Broughton Community <laughs> Access, 1 North Main Street, and you can call them at 508-580-2228, or, or if you come to this meeting, you can do one, okay? And public service announcements are heard on the three channels often, and um, a lot of people do hear them. A lot of people, and we know they hear them because then when you're um, shopping or at church or whatever, say, oh, I heard you. Yeah. So anyway, it, it is heard, but it's another um, opportunity because if people hear, people read, you know, then they, they, they remember, and that's huge. So anyway, and that's what we want to encourage. So I'm going to be, you know, we have a whole lot planned for cultural affairs and tourism. What we want to clear up is no one, quote, is in charge of cultural affairs and tourism. We come together once a month, two, two of us, um, four of us really, but Pastor Reed hosts it here in his building, and I try to do as much as I can to connect everybody up and promote this and send out press releases and do the PSA. But no one is the boss. Okay, this is kind of a, this is kind of like way back in the 60s when people lived in communes. That's sort of like the deal. Okay, but we're not living together. Okay, <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so getting off this, there is more grant information and availability out there, and we always want people to know about this because we want to search it. So I had contacted Brockton Redevelopment Authority, which is at inside the same building as the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, 60 School Street. Now, uh, you can go on to Broughton Redevelopment Authority's website to find out about these. these. These grants will be coming out, and they are for nonprofits and non-for-profit entities for various projects. They're not humongous amounts of money, but for a lot of these volunteer-based nonprofits, $5,000 is a serious chunk of change. And um, one is reminded of the Girl Scouts standing out there on a very cold Saturday with their little sign selling the Girl Scout cookies and trying to get people to pull, pull in. And uh, very hard to drive by them. Cookies are good. Um, but anyway, but seriously, there's a variety of other information. Pastor Reed is a member of his, um, what do I want to call it, grant organization. So other people can find out. We're not, we're sharing information here. Okay. So meanwhile, um, we're going to be having subcommittees as things go on. Everyone is welcome to join them, okay? And then you don't have to join them. But I'm going to make about four announcements here. I'm with the Broughton High School Alumni Association. Some of you have been lucky enough to graduate from Broughton High. What I want everyone to know is we're doing our annual nominations for seeking for distinguished alumni at those that have met professional, um, exceeded professional, exceeded community um, involvement, and, um, and then the last one is youth. Somebody that's been graduated within the 10 years and that has, uh, and they're wicked, wicked young. Anyway, so, but that's, so that's one of the things we have going on. And I, I do um, I want to mention um, and as I mentioned before, the American Associ American African American uh, uh, Association of Broughton, or Jamie Hodges, president here, she is having a flag raising in City Hall Plaza along with other people at one no, two thirty p.m. on February first. Okay, it's going to be a lot of other things that I want to mention. Also, um, I'll I'll do this so Frank doesn't have to come up here um, on. Saturday, February 12th, 
uh, BLF, which is Brockton Library Foundation, is having a, a very large book sale and DVD and CD. As it stands now at Brockton uh, Main Library through a four Main Street from 10 to 4. And we're going to have a guest author signing his books and uh, a few other things going on. But again, all this is free to the public, and you know, the books are bargains. You know, we're looking at 50 cents, and generally speaking, a dollar for CDs and DVDs. And um, this is not bad, considering we're looking into, you know, one, not even, you know, a month, a month and a half of the new year. And like I said, more things are going on. I'm going to allow other people to talk about that. But last but not least, we have sort of a mini subcommittee, which anyone can join at any time, and there will also be other subcommittees. So we met around the holidays to discuss the fact that it'll be one year in March of 2022 that we've had this group going here. And we're very excited about that. And we want to thank Council Azap that's in the back of the room for filing the resolve. Okay, which by the way, anybody can call Council Azap and she can file a resolve for you. But anyway, the resolve was to let, you know, ask and, and get, acquire the support of the community and the elected officials to have cultural affairs and tourism. Okay, now having said that, we want to celebrate one year of it with inviting volunteer-based nonprofits, nonprofits, and other groups doing positive things in the community, activities and such, performing, teaching, etc., to be a part of this event. So, anyway, it won't cost anything. We want to clear that up right now for those that are participating and those that are attending. And it would be in March. We'll have to decide on the date because we do not want to infringe on that very important date in March where a lot of people run around dressed like leprechauns and celebrate um, the, the, the um, you know, the, the uh, how would I say it, a real kickoff to spring, but in all honesty, you know, a really good day, the luck of the Irish. So, anyway. So those are the primarily the announcements I have. Anyone can call me at 774-297-4939 or email me at amboregard, B-E-A-U-R-E-G-A-R-D at outlook.com. And, uh, I, you know, be happy to talk to you. You can call me anytime after 7 in the morning and before 10 at night. It kind of fizz out after that. And, um, you know, really to, you know, inform you, help you navigate this, this whole situation. We're honored to have a couple of guests tonight. And one of them, I'm going to ask Susie to come up here to speak on her project. And um, we, we can provide handouts. We want to clear that up and, you know, other uh, you know, situations, should people have concerns. We also want to allow other people to have announcements. We want Councilor Azat to come up here and say something for a minute because, again, she's been our advocate, and we want people to understand that, um, how would I say it, we encourage all kinds of positives, regardless of where um, these events take place. They can be small, large, or in between. And in eight out of ten instances, all the events that we support uh, don't cost anyone anything, so that that part's huge. So anyway, thank you, and Susie, come on up. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Susie Lordy. I'm the founder and CEO of a 501c3 nonprofit here in Massachusetts called 24 Hour Power Inc., and we do a very unique art form called recovery graffiti. Now, what is recovery graffiti? Well, graffiti gets a bad rap, right? I mean, people think of graffiti, they think of how to remove it. That's, that's the number one Google search you would find out there is how to remove graffiti. What they don't realize is that um, graffiti now has elevated to an incredibly powerful art form and a way to get the voice out in amazing, colorful, bright, vibrant um, strokes. So what we did was we took a negative and turned it into a positive. And we started this with a target market that has a negative and turned them into a positive. And those are addicts and alcoholics that are seeking recovery, okay? So many people have the attitude, once an addict, always an addict. 
once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. They haven't seen people in long-term recovery then because I've never seen greater rock stars than people that have been to hell and back. And um, so we initially introduced recovery graffiti three or four years ago to that target market, okay? So we were strictly working with um, people that were seeking recovery or just had had it with their lifestyle for a while. You have to remember the level of the level of excitement that you have to bring to an addict's life if you want to keep their attention in recovery, okay? Um, the endorphins have all long been cut off. Um, so you really need some high octane entertainment and that's what graffiti does. Um, whether it's spray paint, acrylics, um, stencil work, um, a some of the best graffiti artists out there had to do stencils because they were, they were running from the police when they were doing their work and they had to hurry up and put something on a building quickly. However, they have turned into the best mentors um, now that they have flipped the switch and come and worked on the other side with us. So what we found is um, it's, it's an exciting, explosive art form. And you look at the grants that are out there today and the murals that are out there today, all you have to do is drive through the city of Lynn or Cambridge. And very soon it will be the city of Brockton as well because we have a lot of murals coming up that 24-hour power is going to be doing on behalf of the city of Brockton. And what we've done is we've, we've turned the tables from strictly dealing with people in recovery from drugs and alcohol then we expanded it to their families, friends, supports, and communities. Well, that encompasses everyone, right? And mental health is a huge issue today, especially among youth. So we expanded our program to include Old Colony YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Brockton Christian Mentoring Youth Initiative, the Brockton Public School Systems. Um, we stayed busy with them during COVID-19 just as much as we did prior to COVID-19 and even now. Um, we found ways to do tutorials for them where students um, in the Brockton public school systems could learn how to make cool graffiti masks. And they had contests for that. And, the, and all the middle schools, there was like 600 middle school kids doing this project. And they, they were all able to stream this on YouTube and watch it in their classrooms. And these are just the kind of ways to keep the kids involved and let them know that they still have a voice even when it feels like it's being crushed with all these programs that it get put on hold from them, right? Now more than ever they need art. So our program, we do a lot of interactive art with youth. And um, we, will, we will have, for example, we'll have a master graffiti artist come down and he'll tag a huge word. And it could be in multiple languages because in Brockton the number one language is in English. Okay, so we tend to use languages like we, we'll do Haitian Creole, we'll do um, Portuguese, we'll do Spanish, we'll do all different languages because you need to in order to represent our cultures today. And so when we do the diversity artwork, we make sure that we include the language factor and then we include everything from what we've seen are even little kids, man. Little kids want to do this. now. Clearly, if you're under 18, we can't let you use spray paint, okay? It's against the law. But now, actually, there's spray paint that's water-based, so that has, that has changed the game. Um, but it's watery, so we don't use it as often unless we're doing an inside project. Um, if we're doing outside artwork, we'll let the kids do handprints. And they can do multiple colored handprints inside the letters that we create. So let's say there's a big word that says hope you know, in, in five foot letters, the kids' handprints are going to be either in or around the word hope so that they're part of the project. Meanwhile, they're not just doing that, they're engaging the graffiti artists to learn more tricks of the trade and it's just an exciting experience for them. I've seen so many kids that didn't want to play football or basketball and were left by the sidelines with this and they, they found recovery graffiti and they were like, man, I can sink my teeth into this. This is something I want to do. I want to learn how to make stencils. I want to learn how to do artwork like this. I want to journal using these kind of methodologies. It's really, it's really empowering. Some of the projects we have coming up, including BCA, um, we're going to be doing Downey Elementary School um, right there on Electric Avenue. Um, we're going to do 
Actually, it's a 180-foot wall. If anyone's familiar with where Downey Elementary is, there's this huge wall that when you pull into the parking lot, you can't miss it. Um, and it's going to be a diversity mural. And it's huge. It's got everything from, you name it, special ed, all the way to every ethnicity that you can imagine. It's, it's an incredible mural. We got it passed through the, the um, school committee. And we're going to begin that hopefully in March if the weather, if the weather cooperates. Um, that's going to be one project that we work on. Another project that we can't wait to get involved with is with BCA. And we're going to be doing diversity artwork, hopefully either on the building itself, man, which includes booms and stuff like that. I mean, we're talking, this is going to be like a Hollywood set out there. We're going to have state-of-the-art equipment to let us do going up a hill. Or we'll also, um, we're also in conversations to see if we can do some diversity artwork um, where if you're familiar with BCA and how, it's, how the parking lot has two levels, mm -hmm. there's one huge concrete wall there. And it's perfect for graffiti. I mean, it's just, it's, it's begging for it. So we're going to do that. We, ha we do a lot of pay it forward activities with um, people experiencing homelessness. We just finished a project with the mayor's office in Old Colony YMCA, where we, um, we wrote beautiful, inspiring words in four different languages on blankets for people experiencing homelessness. And then we had the kids from Old Colony Y, and DYS actually, all got together, and they added their own kind of handprints to it and, and words that they wanted to say, like, keep on going and respect. And, it was beautiful to see what they wrote on it as well. So we, we did those for um, Pastor Roberto from Universal Missionary Church, that I'm sure you're familiar with. And um, then we also had 50 backpacks that are filled with everything from PPE to flashlights and can openers and hats and gloves and just the things that people need that are on the streets today. So. It's a really good learning curve. What, what we found is the at-risk youth that we work with, and I hate to even call them at-risk because literally everyone today is at-risk with COVID. They really are. I mean, I don't know anyone that, that um, doesn't have some form of mental health issues right now with what's been going on with the pandemic that I've come across. So to me, when I see the level of commitment that they have to my organization and how they always want to give back, they're never really thinking of themselves, it, it blows my mind. They're always like, when's the next project? When can we help? You know, are we going to make some more backpacks for the, for the homeless? It just, I mean, that's what it's all about. This community, working in the city of Brockton, even though I'm located in Rockland, Mass, 99.9% .9 of my work for the past three years has been in the city of Brockton. And I can't think of a better partner. Uh, the mayor's office has been phenomenal to work with. Um, the the faith-based organizations have been great to work with, the community organizations. I just can't say enough about it. And if anyone is interested in learning more about recovery graffiti and what it can do for perhaps your organization, if you need a mural, if you need something cool like that, please get in touch with me. I think you'll find not only are we affordable, but we're a blast. It's, it's, it's a true event when we do something like that, and it's something you'll never forget. So phone number, thanks so much. Phone number. Oh, yeah. Um, so my cell phone is area code 781-789-2724, and my email is S-U-S-A, B as in boy, E-L-L-A, 007, at verizon.net. So that's Susabella007 at verizon.net. Oh, thank you. And thank this you so much. And our website, if you want some more information, if you go to www.24hrpower.com, you'll, you'll get a whole history lesson on what recovery graffiti is all about. Oh, thank you very thank, much. Thank you. All right. Hi. Hi, Susan, I don't know if you remember me. We met at Tuca's Playground. Yep. Okay. Yes. Last yes. summer. Okay, yeah. so um, if anyone wants to see uh, some of Susan's group's uh, work locally, uh, Tuca's Playground, which is located down the village, 
I know it's the dead of winter right now. You don't want to be trampled through the snow, but uh, her group did a, a really nice job on um, on the sidewalks there, yeah. and also okay. on the um, the stone retaining walls uh, against the bleachers. Yeah. So if anyone wants to see uh, a sample of her work, maybe in the spring, take a drive uh, up to Tukas, uh down the village. It's located on Melrose Street, <laughs> and um, uh, take a look. Um, she does really good work. Thank you, and th I'm glad you brought that particular project up because what I found was amazing and why I love the City of Champions so much is not only did we bring, we brought girls from Edwina Martin House do down to work on this. We brought the kids from Old Colony Y, Boys and Girls Club. They're all out there with their paintbrushes, but what happened also was a lot of people in the community that were driving by at the top, they're like, what are you doing? And we're like, well, you know, Home Depot and us, we got together and we have all this paint and we're going to paint 150 railroad ties that are standing up if you want to help. And they would go home and come back in painter's clothes and help us. And these were just people from the neighborhood, man, that just happened to see it. And they said, it's so nice to see something going on that's not a drug deal in our neighborhood. And I heard that a lot. And they, they were out in, in full force. So it was... It was a wonderful experience. We were there 10 times creating artwork and um, just cleaning up the park as best we could because it really had been neglected. And we, and we hope to be able to do a lot more with the parks department. I think there's several more that could use some TLC. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. And it's whatever people want. I mean, we don't, we, we don't come in and tell you this is what we're going to create. We, we want the input from even with BCA when when we were going back and forth and it's like there'll be no sketch until we know exactly what you want and then when you when you tell us what we want we'll create that for you because this has got to be a win-win for everyone uh, how would you call you is that are you were you a gra graffiti artist yourself you call it graffiti oh, artist yeah. no i'm a graffiti mentor um, <laughs> yeah what what happened was actually um, i had a lot of friends that were graffiti artist back in the day. I'm also in recovery myself. I've got 29, tw I'm sorry, 27 years of continuous recovery from drugs and alcohol. Yeah. However, I lost a lot of friends that were graffiti artists that either um, fell off of buildings or seriously, I mean, got hit by trains and stuff and did this back in the day when it was, it was more of a it was more of a drug addiction for them, was to do the graffiti. So I've always loved graffiti, and I've always thought it was such a shame that, that no one was using it for the right purpose. So I always said, it, when I get enough time together and, and get my act together, um, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to honor my friends that are gone with, and we're going to do recovery graffiti. So. I'm sure they're all up there now being like, what are you guys doing, man? You're going to tag it like this. But, but that's what it's all about. And um, so their spirit does live on in a lot of the work that we do today. Oh, wow. That's really special. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for letting me share. What you can't see on camera is people are communicating with each other and wanting to meet afterwards and everything. It's, it's crazy. Um, and and want to you know, plan more positive things here. Next, we have, and people don't realize, a lot of people, which is really sad, that we have a poet laureate in the city. And Philip will be up here, be able to talk about a couple of things. And this is quite an honor. The city um, just acquired poet laureate for the first time in their history. And August of uh, 2021. So I'm going to have Philip come up here and mention a few things. And so thank you for having me here today. Um, when I became Poet Laureate, one of my initiatives was to appoint a Youth Poet Laureate. And I'm happy to announce, with the help of Director of the Library, Paul Engel, Brockton Library Trustee Jocelyn Mink, Meek, Massasoit Community College, and especially Councilman Winthrop Farwell, who will present before the City Council the ordinance that will make 
the Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate a permanent position for the city of Brockton. With that said, in the coming weeks, we will start our search for Brockton's first Poet Laureate. We will be flooding all social platforms, including Brockton City Hall and library websites, the Brockton Enterprise, NAACP, all schools, and all social medias with the criteria to apply and be considered to be Brockton's first Youth Poet Laureate. To the youth of Brockton, we believe in you. Help us make Brockton the lighthouse of the arts. Um, on Saturday, February 19th, at the Brockton Library, um, in the Driscoll Art Gallery at 2 o'clock, our poetry series, Everyone Has a Voice, returns in person. And once again, I am happy to announce that our features will be two of Brockton's local poets. We have Marcus Pierre. Um, let me see who Marcus Pierre. Uh, received his associate's um, degree in psychology at Massasoit Community College and is receiving his bachelor's in psychology at Bridgewater State University. Marcus is, a Haitian, is of Haitian descent. He is also a Christian, and his poetry contains references from the Bible. The overall purpose of Marcus's poetry is to empower, enlighten, and entertain. Marcus Pierre is a firm believer that poetry is an art form that is timeless. And then our second feature from Brockton is Trisha Seda, is a young Afro-Latina poet whose passion for writing sparked in the midst of the passing of her brother. Um, due to systematic failure, she has now been refining her skills in hopes of creating a chapbook in order to shed light on the realism of motherhood. So we're going to have that. Everyone Has a Voice has been graced with the diversity of poets from all over Massachusetts, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and beyond. This is a chance to come and support our local poets. Let's fill the room. Don't forget, we have an open mic, as Frank knows, <laughs> that you can come read your poetry, if you have a short story or a song. So we have the open mic, and we have, we'll have be having our two features. And you have a question? I just want to know, what can you in this case call, call you know, like Well, right now, the criteria is uh, 15 to 20 okay, will, be, will be the eligible age. Um, so I know I'm ahead of myself. But I want to lay the groundwork for an upcoming special event at the Brockton Library um, on Saturday, April 30th, in the Lingus Auditorium. We will be celebrating Poetry Month and honoring our teachers at the same time. The Brockton Library will invite two educators from our local schools and colleges to present their original poetry or poetry that inspired them. Brockton High School, Massasoit Community College, Bridgewater State College have already accepted our invitation. We look forward to expressing our gratitude, honoring our teachers, and celebrating poetry and the arts right here in Brockton. Again, let's fill the room. Show, show our community that you know we are um, a lighthouse for the arts. Uh, we want to thank you for that. And yes, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure people understood the criteria. 15 to 20 for youth. And uh, now we're going to have Council Azat come up here because uh, this is a person that really made all this possible uh, way back. Last year, when we were begging her to file a resolve, she said, no problem, then off we went. So anyway, here you go. Here, Councilor. 
Well, good evening, everybody. It's so nice to see um, a room full of people and new people, which is really exciting. A lot of new faces. And um, I, first of all, I'd like to thank, obviously, Ann Beauregard, who's been really a big part of this, and Pastor Reed. Not only have you been a big part of this, but also given the space every, every month for us to be able to meet. So this is exciting. I'm happy to see that it's growing and it's continuing. Um, and I'm all about the arts, and you, you all know that. Um, Anne has already mentioned a lot of the um, activities that are happening in the city, all of the events, but there is one thing I did want to bring to everyone's attention. I'm not sure if, um, if some of you are aware that the city of Rockton received $2 million in ARPA funds, which is American Rescue, um, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. And all uh, nonprofits, you have to be a 501c3 or churches, um, can apply for these funds. And this is directly with the city through the mayor's office. So um, you can go on to the city website, the application's on the city website. It is a long application, but I'm, I recommend that you're patient, you fill out the, the forms, but um, the funds will be distributed if, you, if your organization has been hurt by COVID-19. So um, I hope this, you know, people who are watching or people in the room are able to um, apply for these funds. Uh, once again, if you visit the city of Brockton's website, I don't have, I'm excited to hear, it's nice to meet Susie. I did hear about, um, you know, some of the graffiti that was happening. I think you were going to do the Howard School, but we set to hold off for now because we have plans for that building. Um, we didn't want to see art come down, but you know, <laughs> as soon as it went up. So, uh, but it's nice to meet you and hear about your exciting uh, projects. And obviously, Port Laureate, it's nice to see you here and we'll, continue to hopefully COVID will allow us to continue with our events. But thank you again and, and I'm happy to be a part of this. Thank you, Shirley. Now, I just wanna quickly jump in for one thing to make sure that you know a resource to go look to find out what's going on in the city of Brockton is we have our website, uh, happeninginbrockton.com. And, uh, you know, sadly we have the you know, the announcement that the, uh, <clears throat> all the poetry at the, uh, for the month of January was canceled and some of those events will be, re well, they will be rescheduled one day. <laughs> but it's so good to hear that they're uh, ready to go for February. And uh, <clears throat> one of the new ones that just came in. Mm -hmm. So if you have an event, get it to Ann or get it to me. Ideally, when you're sending an image like this one that's here that just came in, send it as an image, not necessarily a PDF. I mean, I can do it. It's no big deal for me to be able to convert it, but it just takes a little extra time. And, and as, as the announcements come in, mm -hmm. they get on there. So, Philip, you need to get to me that <laughs> the, the February events. And, uh, you know, some of the turnaround time has literally been two minutes. Yeah. You know, I get the email from Ann, boom, boom, it's up there. You know, after tonight's meeting, next month's meeting will be announced. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so that is a resource that is out there happening in Brockton.com. And we try to keep it all up to date because you can't attend something if you don't know that it's happening. And uh, we have a lot of resources, you know, that are going on here in Brockton. And of course, as uh, Councilor Asak just mentioned about the grants, you know, if you want help writing grants, or some of us that have had some experience help writing grants. And of course, like any government, you know, paperwork, it's going to be long. <laughs> yeah, that's just sort of automatic. But there's a lot of things that we can do. And so, um, again, keep up to date. Send me the information when you're having a meeting or something you want done. Put your links at the very end of it. We now have some businesses on there that are Brockton businesses. We want to support Brockton businesses. Mm -hmm. If I have a choice to buy something in Brockton or Amazon, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy Brockton if it's available. And uh, so we want to be able to support one another. <coughs> so I just want to 
it, was, it seemed like a perfect segue to jump in there about the website. So, Anne. Okay. Yeah. Next, we're going to have uh, Watching Community Access um, come up here. Carl Pride is the media director. And uh, remember that BCA generally tapes all the positives going on, the sports going on, and oh yeah, the government going on. So we're all, you know, covering all the bases. And these public service announcements that you can tape are on all these channels all the time. So, you know, just, um, and everything, remember, doesn't cost anything. So, all right. Oh, good evening, everyone. Uh, one, what I want to talk to you about this time is about our day of service. Uh, we're in partnership <coughs> with the NAACP, Cape Verdean Association, and the Brockton High School Alumni Association to do a day of service uh, preparing uh, packets for the homeless at BCA on Monday from 3 to 6 p.m. Um, you know, it's an opportunity to give back, another opportunity to give back. Uh, BCA this year, uh, I'm making the commitment on behalf of BCA that we're going to partner every month with at least one non other nonprofit in the community every month for an activity, you know, that we can either house at our facility or do somewhere together. Um, this is the year of partnership, this, and that's what BCA is about, about creating partnership, working together to build a better Brockton. That's it, short and sweet this time. Thank you. And for those of you that didn't think anything was going on in Broughton, and we haven't even scratched the surface, because a couple of people here um, are part of um, the um, associations. They have neighborhood park associations, but a lot of people don't realize. So, you know, if you want to be close to home, as uh, you were hearing people talk about the Tukas Playground, which is in the village, there's also another playground in the village. And they have a lot of activities that take place there. There's another one, Keith Park Association, Neighborhood Association. There's another one, the Frederick Douglass Park Association. There's another one, the, um, oh, wait a minute. It's uh, Intersection of Edgar Playground Association. I mean, again, there's all these different things. So anyone that has, like, how would I say it, uh, you know, a passion or a, a desire or an interest there's something here in the city for you. I also um, want to mention, um, uh, uh, one of the individuals couldn't be here tonight, she had a class, but um, uh, she's with the Garden Club, and uh, before you know it, we'll be out there planting and cleaning and what have you. And again, anyone can join um, the Garden Club. You can call me, 774-297-4939, because I did not ask my friend's permission if I could give her phone number. <laughs> Over, over a Broughton Community Access. But in all seriousness, we can connect you up with that. There's also the DW Field Park Association, which is a phenomenal gem in our city. And again, there's just, like I said, there's so many great groups. And you don't have to fork out money to be a part of them. You know, it's just really, and again, the Historical Society. And all these groups have different plans throughout the year. Now, one thing that goes on always here is learning okay, at all levels. But Broughton um, School System, you know, it's the fourth largest school system in the Commonwealth, they have a component called the Broughton Adult Learning Center. And this is on Crescent Street in Broughton, 211 Crescent Street. And Larry's here tonight, but he just started last week, so he doesn't want to quite come up here in front of the cameras. But I'm going to give you the phone number for the Adult Learning Center, 508-580-7475. Now, I was lucky enough and have been lucky enough to be on their advisory board for almost 20 years now. And they are just such a remarkable group, group of individuals, so devoted and dedicated. They're teaching beginning English as a second language, intermediate, advanced. They have citizenship classes. Uh, they have the adult um, GED, they call it the high step now, 
and math classes, family learning programs, computer assisted instruction, and they provide a lot of services. And that's what Larry helps navigate people in various you know, areas with their families, et cetera. And this has been around for over 40 years now. And what is amazing about it, too, is at one time, there's like 80 countries represented at this school. I mean, it's remarkable. And they have classes at night, classes during the day. And people go from all ages. It's nothing for a 70-year-old to be in class with a 40-year-old. And that person's from Nigeria. And this one's from Guatemala. And that one's from Poland. And it's just super terrific to know that this is all transpiring right um, near downtown. Uh, they're just the dedication of these individuals and, and then the students that graduate and how they excel. There's various programs with um, Massasoit Community College should they want to pursue their education. And I neglected to mention, too, there's also a program for um, certified nurses aid. They work closely with Mass Hire, and they've worked in the past with um, Metro South Chamber of Commerce. I mean, again, this is a demonstration of remarkable collaboration. And like I said, uh, if you see nothing else, um, the graduation is, it's a tearjerker, I'm not going to lie to you, to hear the, how would I say, the challenges some of these individuals experienced before they got to this nation and started doing what they're doing. And they, they become remarkable um, citizens and contributors to this community. I mean, we are not lacking for for great and, and, and uh, you know, and again, I cannot say enough about the Adult Learning Center. Granted, I'm a little biased because I've had the pleasure of seeing these individuals, um, and it's just it, it's something else. And again, they they work closely with other organizations, and that's what we want to emphasize here constantly. Which I'm going to lead into two parts here, because you always have to remember your history and respect it and learn from it to move forward. So this is what, um, we have a gentleman here tonight, um, Frank, and he's involved with the time capsule, and we're kicking this off, and we're looking for people to participate of all ages and of all, how would I say, backgrounds, because we want someone that knows the history of sports in Broughton, and we want someone that you know has all kinds of collectibles, and we want all these people to be involved in putting, you know, contributing to this time capsule. It's in its beginning stages, and I don't know if Frank feels like coming up here and discussing it, or you want, no, you want to hold off for one month here? Okay, so we're get, beginning the process of getting people to join up in this time capsule. We'll be meeting anywhere. We're going to try to meet at night or on weekends so we're not excluding individuals. And again, we want a 25-year-old we want a 14-year-old, we want a 92-year-old, we want it all, because that's it's a demonstration of all the, um, the how would I say it, contributions people can make um, to this time capsule. I'm not going to lie to you, we're copying a good thing. Uh, we had the pleasure of going to Plymouth, Massachusetts, where they did a super time capsule, and they gave us a template and instructions, and we're just going to town with this. and. Uh, which is so get go. So we'd like to, in our uh, how would I say goals, to see this by the end of 2022. How would I say have an installation, and uh, what do you call a ribbon cutting, you know, to have to transpire. Now the last part of this, I'm going to leave to mostly Pastor Reed, and not because I'm sticking it to him, because I'm not. We've had we've had that discussion here. I'm not throwing him under the bus, as the expression goes, of uh, starting this plan to have an event on a Saturday in March, uh, late March probably, because you know the weather will be on our side more than likely. And this would be a day event, again, free to the public and free to the participants to represent uh, their organizations. So the people say, I didn't know this. Well, there is going to be one place where you can find out all about it. And you can have your little table and your little setup. And um, we're hoping and we're going to be begging Broughton Community Access to take this event. But in all honesty, we want a veterans group. 
we want a sports team, we want, um, you know, the Little League, all that, Girl Scouts, whatever. We want you know, both uh, volunteer-based nonprofits and uh, institutions that I'll call, you know, very respectable ones, two that come to my mind right now, Catholic Charities and Charity Guild, and, um, oh, Health Imperatives, you know, right off the top of my head, Latino um, Women's um, Institute and um, Family Center, and again, and we want people to be able to learn about what's going on in this city because so many times we hear that, oh, we need this, and we already have it. So the more we figure, and we wish to make this an annual event because in our fantasies it becomes so large that we have to use a gym or something, but we'll, we'll start out with something a little more manageable and we'll keep on inviting you to the table. And basically your only commitment's gonna be to kind of stick around from the beginning to the end and bring, you know, whether your brochures, your flyers, et cetera, and pass on and share the information. So anyway, I'm gonna let Pastor talk a little bit more about that. Thank you. What I want to know yeah. is what is there left to say? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Actually, um, one of my other organizations that I'm involved with, the um, Life Transforming sure. Leadership Foundation, we did one of these a couple of years ago um, at a large, semi-large facility down in the other end of the city where, with nonprofits, and some of the ones that Ann mentioned were there, and there were... There was probably, I think, about 10 or 12 <clears throat> different nonprofit organizations. Self-help, I think, was there and mm -hmm. others. You know, uh, it was really an introduction for people in the community, but it was more geared towards the different organizations finding out about each other. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes I'll get asked, you know, what do you do with, you know, how can you help this person? And I'll go... Well, I don't have the resources for that. And then I'll, you know, if it's family related, I automatically, I say, family center. And if they can't help you, they know who will be able to help you. And so we have a lot of groups around here. So we will look to do this again, late March on a Saturday. And uh, <clears throat> we'll possibly do it here in the basement because there's a fair amount of room. You can get a lot of tables in there. Uh, but we may have to expand if we get a good response to this. I know there's several other organizations just in this area that we've helped. Um, and people often don't know that they exist. I think it was mentioned earlier, the Edwina Martin mm -hmm. group. Yeah. Well, you know, we're used to seeing them down there you know, on North Main Street. Well, they now have another building here in North Main Street, and they are our neighbors. And, uh, you know, so we've, we've had some interaction with them. Uh, we're looking forward also to the garden season, <laughs> getting the garden going again, and uh, maybe being able to get those nice park benches out there this year. Um, but, you know, so this event will be for nonprofits across the board, uh, faith-based organizations, other nonprofits, just so that we can expose ourselves to one another and the services that we offer, but we'll be advertising for the public to come in. Yeah. Who knows how many will show up? We could have 20 show up. Mm -hmm. We could have 300 show up. We'll be ready for all. One place it will not be is it will not be held in the wind tunnel that we know as City Hall Plaza. <laughs> yeah, if it's a really nice day, you know, we can expand outside. We do have some large tents here that can be used for expansion purposes. Um, but the basement is nice size, almost the full length of the building. And uh, we do know of one sporting group that will be here, the Brockton Bruisers, and many people are becoming aware that uh, we are their practice facility now. So on Saturday mornings, they come together to practice. When they couldn't do it, they can't do it outside in a park. They come here. And um, i got to tell you, it's quite entertaining. It's like, man, I, you know, I, I'm here in the building, and i got my cameras on upstairs and the, you know, security cameras all over the building, so I can see when they're... I can actually do, I do it so I can see when they're done. But... Uh, 
you know, so I know they'll be available, and uh, you know, there may be some others as well that we'll be able to get in here. So, you know, put your thinking caps on of uh, nonprofits in the city. Email the names and any contact information to Ann. She'll get it to me. We'll reach out to them. We'll advertise it on the website. We'll advertise it on different Facebook events and as well. But we want our city to be the example for all the other communities around us. We have everything here. It's just nobody knows about it. <laughs> so let's solve that problem. Don't worry about that math problem that, you know, bugged you in high school. You know, this, this is something that we can solve simply by getting the word out there. And, and I'm so thankful that we have such a good relationship with BCA and that they put this out there. And, you know, it's, it makes a difference. And I know they've offered their facility for many different things. And it could end up being down there. You know, we've, <clears throat> I have to go down and do a walkthrough to see what space there is. <laughs> You know, um, I've done these, I want to call them mini conventions, you know, for genealogy. I've also done the big ones. Now, in technology, the granddaddy of all technology shows was one called Convex. And it was held in Vegas. And they only averaged 125,000 people. Only. <clears throat> and uh, I worked a number of those over the years with different companies and that. I actually went there one year just to attend. And the first day, I got hired by an educational software company to work their booth for the rest of the show. And they paid me all my expenses, my hotel, my airfare out there, and back, everything. It was great. It's like, I got to do that more conventions. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll, we won't be that scale, but we definitely want to let people know we're here to be a help. And Ann can't do it on her own. I can't do it on our own. VCA can't do it on their own. We all need to work together. And we have a number of small businesses here in Brockton that are starting to partner in here with us, and they'll be involved as well. All right. So when are, when are you having your first meeting to talk about this? <clears throat> that will be decided in an email later this week. <laughs> it, it's going to be quick. I mean, planning for this type of event, there's not a lot that has to be done uh, other than make, securing enough tables once we get the interest. But we want to get the information out to people as quickly as possible Absolutely. and likely will be the, you know, like the last Saturday you know, of March 26th. Yeah, the 26th. 26th. Yeah, I mean, St. Patrick's season will be over by then. Yes. You know. <laughs> you know. Although we may have, you know, we squeeze in an Irish concert here, you know, during that week. So always up to do that. But uh, again, anyway, so we'll start gearing things up, and like I say, there's a lot of commute groups to talk to, and that may want to be a part of this, because I know the different groups I've met. One thing I've heard from all of them: we want to grow. Now it's funny when I heard that from the Garden Club, <laughs> but um, you know, but it's true. It's like every group wants to grow. If we do not grow, we will die. And I don't want that to be my legacy. That's not what I'm interested in. Now, you know, <clears throat> there's so again, there's so many uh, <laughs> intricate things going on here, but we will get this all, uh, the initial stuff put together, we'll get it out to everybody, and like I say, Ann's word of subcommittee, now, I'm sure there'll be one for that. Um, you know, we all have busy schedules, and we other ha we have other events that are going on with our organization. So we want to try and coordinate. That's the reason for the website. It's just so that you know, you know what's going on. I remember the, uh, the last thing I was doing here. You know, it's like I timed it perfectly because I I picked the hours for it, 
because I knew that the library was doing something that evening at 6 o'clock. And so I wanted to make sure that there was no overlap because there were people that were, were going to be here that were going to be at the library as well. And so that's what this coordination is all about. It's hard to do, but it's worth it. So, Any quick questions? Yes. Well, I'm not on the schedule, but can we open it up for new business? Sure. Yeah. Hey, we're having our church annual business meeting this week, so I'm hoping that there's going to be no extra surprise new business then. But come on, Dennis. No, no, I'm just okay. I, I, I don't need that. <coughs> okay. I just got some questions. Sure. And I want to commend everybody for what you're doing. And I have a special tip of the hat to Reverend Reed and Annie for what they do putting this meeting together. Annie, I heard you say tonight, and I don't understand it. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Hodges has started a new organization. Uh, okay, first of all, what she is, already. What is she, she, she already started? It. It's called the African American Association of Brockton, and it is there to recognize the um, businesses and uh, other needs. It's not to, how would I say it, conflict with. NAACP, Greater Broughton NAACP, it works with it. But when, when for those of us that um, you know, have read a little bit more history and remember, the Greater you know, NAACP was really begun to mobilize and empower and, how would I say, improve the quality of life for those of color and those of poverty. And, uh, you know, by greats like Martin Luther King, for example, we're, we're we going to be observing that this weekend. Um, this African American Association is once again to connect everyone together, empower African American businesses, businesses of color, uh, and other situations and needs. I'm not giving it justice. Jamie started this back in November. And she had illness in the family this week, so I have a feeling that's why she's not here right now. And so, yeah, she'd be happy to share more of it with you, and you'll be reading a lot more about it. And again, everyone is invited to all this. So, yes, okay. that was one question. Next. Next question I have is, yeah. who is the author going to be for the uh, book fair at the library? Because when people here are sharing that, yeah. a lot of people want to come. Okay. okay. Thank you, Larry, for coming. Have a good night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, this is, um, it's, it's right here, this gentleman in the corner, Pastor Joseph, okay, and um, he's of, um, originally from Haiti, and he will have some of his books on that day. He is on the Board of Trustees of the Broughton Public Library System, and um, he supports the Broughton Library Foundation. Yes. Okay, my next question Yes. Is, Doing good so far, yeah. <laughs> what has happened to the Broughton System? No, 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 no. They are doing, they're a traveling, <laughs> all I could think of is a song that was popular in the 70s. Um, anyway, they have a traveling musical talent. They, if they can be at the Broughton Main Library, they can be at Christ Congregational Church, they can be in Easton, they can be at Massasoit, they're all over the place. Because, you know, talent like that oh, doesn't... Great, great talent. Yes, great talent. talent. So they, they, they travel. That's the best way to describe they it. They don't yeah. have a home. No, they no. They used to be at the uh, War Memorial Building, okay? They, they had some practice. Oh, there. yeah, they, they had and a few there. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Oh, yes. But I haven't heard them play in Brock in a long time. Oh, no, they played, and BCA covered it. They played at Christ Congregational Church. Yep. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, you, you, had, you, know, you weren't out and about that last month, so, yes. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Now, we're calling this yeah. Cultural Affairs and Tourism. Yes. Bill Hogan is supposed to be in charge of tourism. Yet he's not here. And, and I would like to hear him tell us what he, what's going on. Well, uh, that, that one I can't help you on because some of us have emailed and called, and I just I don't know what to tell you. As far as that goes, I guess apparently some people see him on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook myself. So I don't know what to tell you on that. Dennis, I did uh, three out of four, so I'm, I'm pleased here. Any more? Well, I mean, yeah. I'd like to know when the buses are coming, the trains are coming. Yeah, well. And the tours are coming, but nobody can reach them. Well, well uh, Dan, can I, I don't know what to tell you. Can we invite him? I'm sorry? Can we invite him? Well, he's invited every month. Uh, this is not month. top secret. This is on radio and TV, two newspapers, 
uh, the website, the chamber, um, buzz around, and um, where else do I send it? I'm forgetting one. Oh no, I sent it to at least eight entities. So this is by no stretch of the imagination a top secret event. I just want to see one different topic. Okay, well I don't, I don't know. But all I can say is, as far as tourism goes, we have the Full Craft Museum, <laughs> and we have people continuously coming to this community. And as Philip had mentioned before, that he has uh, recognized um, poets from different states coming to present. And I know in the, in the past you've had, you know, from a, a great distance. And that's just an example. We have art exhibits throughout. Well, and yeah, I'm so I mean, I'm yeah. I'm just asking the question why he's volunteered. That, that we have okay. no idea, no? Okay. okay. Right. The other thing I want to say about the uh, yeah. D.W. Field Park Association, it is a gem. Yes. The D.W. Field Park is in gem. And I was oh. growing up, I had so much fun up there. Where <laughs> we used to slide down Tower Hill, okay, all the time when the snowstorm came. Yeah. I skated on a pond, and we had bonfires up there. Oh, that, that, that way we don't encourage, you know. There were marshmallows and hot dogs on the hill, or a fire up there. Yeah. It was so much fun. I wonder if we could just do something about that again in the future, because it's so... It's something that should, there should be something going on up there every weekend. It's such a hidden gem. Really. Well, I mean, again, there is, let's remember, the city does not own the park. It is entrusted to them. At any time, they can, it can be removed, and people don't realize that. But they have to adhere to, I'm going to call it the stipulations in the trust. And one of them includes that they, you cannot sell items. You cannot have any kind of commercial entities. You can't have motor boats speeding up and down the, the pond or what have you. Um, I know that it's supposed to be passive uh, entertainment, passive um, enjoyment and recreation. So I believe that certain you know restrictions, because I do remember somebody wanted to put paddle boats in. I thought that was kind of fun actually, but that you know could not fall under that category. But I can tell you that there's a, various um, events planned. And um, the last one Tom had covered was when they um, went, to, they had a presenter from Mass Audubon Society. Oh, the guy was great. And we learned all about owls. You have no idea how many owls are hanging out at DW Field Park and different kinds. And then we learned about what else? Don't the, forget the otters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and then there was a walking tour. Oh, yes. Yeah, so there's going to be more, you know, Mass Audubon and other, I'm going to refer to them as environmental and experts and, and nature experts. And again, we have a lot going on. I mean, that's, again, I haven't even covered so much because we're all, all honored in this city to have the um, solar system ambassador from NASA, Pat Monteith, and uh, she does several presentations and the Webb telescope opened up all the way like it was supposed to, pretty neat. So she's going to be having more um, presentations. She will also be announcing the winners of the contest in art. And um, they, were seen, they, they can be senior citizens and little kids. So that's, you know, again, plenty of stuff going on. So this is why we keep on trying to keep the lines of communication open. We capitalize on communicating much and taking advantage of the skills and talents um, and patience of Rochester Community Access. So anyway, I would, yes? I'm yeah. ask one more question, I'll shut up. Okay. okay. <laughs> does Brockton have a big screen? Like, yes, Brockton Community Access has one. How big? How many feet wide? Right there? Feet? Well, it's 85 inches, you said, right? Yeah, we have yeah. 85 inches. And what is that? They approximately? That was 70. 60, 63, I think. 63? Okay. 63 in length? Okay. Do you have an 85? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Because the um, yeah. public library allows you to um, borrow equipment like that for training and then you're able to borrow. Um, oh, yeah, because you can borrow, you can take out instruments and telescopes and uh, musical instruments and telescopes and microscopes from the library. So that's really cool, too. Yeah. So, Thank again, um, keep on asking, <laughs> keep on calling. And yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat my phone number. I apologize. 774-297-4939. The reason I'm doing that is not because I have all the answers, but I believe in a lot of instances I can connect people 
and that's 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 the goal here and because um, the more that people know the better off they are the better they can enjoy the community and um, how would I say it again they're more empowered and um, we just benefit from all this. I will be, like I said, New Year's resolution to be sending out these emails in a more, um, in more timely fashion. Um, and also, um, this information from Broughton Redevelopment Authority, we just call them DRA. And um, for these grants, I want people to know about. These are from the federal government, and they're dispersed. Usually people learn about them in January. I think they have a deadline in February. Do not quote me on that part. And then everybody finds out in April if they, you know, if they, you know, got this. And again, all this is public knowledge. It's just how to find it sometimes. Did you ever notice the things that you always don't, you kind of don't want to know about sometimes? Those are the ones that are blasting in your face. And the other things that you're dying to learn about, not so much. But uh, we do want to emphasize that it's um, winter time. Uh, so, you know, if you can check on your neighbors that are elderly and, you know, make sure that the animals are okay because it's still going to be cold out there. Um, it's Martin Luther King and we're, uh, you know, weekend. And again, this will be showing more than, you know, once, um, you know, before and after. But um, let's recognize the fact that, um, how would I say it, people had to come before us so it can be better for us today and, you know, it's, it's recognize and appreciate that. And I always want to thank Pastor Reed, and um, we can, cannot encourage um, all our ethnicities in this city to please come forward, and we'd really like a lot more concerts, movies, <laughs> and festivals. <laughs> so put that on your, um, how would I say it, um, agenda to um, move forward, because um, that's some of the things we're anticipating in the months to come. So again, we'll support you, because the whole idea is to educate other people, inform other people, and support other people. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, see you guys next month, and spread the word. Will do. Okay, thank, thank you.